Hey there, Niner Nation. This is it, the end of the road. Not only is this show Panning for Gold's season finale, it is also our series finale. That's right, after three seasons, over 60 episodes, and close to 900 minutes of fun, and of course a lot of this tweed jacket, our show is closing its doors. We don't have balloons, we don't have confetti, but we cue up that somber kind of orchestra, whatever kind of music. And I want to take some time to just tell you it's been fun. I need to thank all of our loyal viewers for watching each and every week. And of course, all the support on Twitter. You know what, heck with this. Let's just have some fun. We got a great final show on tap for you. A lot to get to for one final time. Panning for Gold 3.0 Part 24 starts right now. A lot happening here in the 49ers athletic department. I think uh, many of you already know that. A big news last week about the 49ers move to Conference USA. We have a one-on-one -on -one sit down with Judy Rose coming, as well as news on track and field. They won the A-10 championships. Golf is heading to their eight straight NCAA tournament. All of that and much, much more. The beat starts right now. We will get to that Judy Rose one-on-one -on -one in a bit, but first the 49ers softball team is geared up and ready for the Atlantic 10 championships this weekend, trying to take down the crown as the fifth seed. Here with more is PFG intern, Brendan Ferguson. Last weekend, the 49ers softball team split with Dayton to solidify a spot in the Atlantic 10 tournament in St. Louis, which is still ongoing. After talking to a few of the players on the team, it seemed pretty clear that they are peaking at the right time. The Niners finished 14-6 and six in their last 20 regular season games, and one big reason the team has played so much better towards the end of the season is because the young talent is forming into shape late in the year. Right now we're in a great state of mind. We've been doing great lately in conference. We've definitely picked it up since you know we first started. We've come a long way, which is really great. I think we're, everyone's just so excited. We have so many new people, and they're just excited to experience conference for the first time. And, Going into this, we expect to show everyone who Charlotte is. You know, we're fifth right now in the conference, but we expect to come out on top, so. Um, I think that I just, I know every game's gonna be a battle, you know. I mean, we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to pitch the best that I have the whole season to get wins, and every win counts, and that's what we're going there for. We're going there to win. It's always, it's definitely exciting and stressful and all over the place, a bunch of different emotions, especially like this year because it was such a, Roller coaster ride for us, and it was you know the last couple games against um, Dayton and everything. It was you know we got the job done and we did what we needed to do to get into the tournament. You know we've been through all the ropes, we've been through everything, and I think that going in, I think we're going to peak at the right time. Um, you know, yeah, we we started off a little rough, and you know having eight new freshmen that's to be expected, you know. But um, you know, coach always tells us never give up and things, and I think. Uh, over this season we've just really come together as a team like everyone's really close on this team and you know everyone knows what's expected of them and I think it finally just came in came into play for us and we've been going up from there. I was, didn't know what to expect so going in I was kind of like I'm just gonna pitch my game and do what I have to do but now I know like what it's gonna take every game and I know that I'm gonna have to bring my A game out for every batter every pitch every inning um, don't let up on anyone, so I think that's prepared us for this tournament. Um, it's just a different, being older, it's a different mindset, definitely. Like when I think back to when I was a freshman going into the A-10 tournament, as opposed to now when I'm going to, into the A-10 tournament, it's a different level of wanting it. Like you think you want it then, but it's just kind of like every year you just realize like, wow, I didn't even know what it felt like to really want to win, you know? Yeah, it's just a different level of really like knowing that we can do it and knowing what it takes and really, um, really wanting to push through and just get through that tournament and get those wins and 
Uh, I think that people are underestimating us one because we are a young team, you know, and people are they still saying that about us. We're young, but all of us have matured a lot, and we we're clicking well now at this point, and you know. We're used to those pressure situations and um, everyone's just ready to go out there and give their best. And so I think we're, everyone's underestimating us, but I think we're going to show everyone that we're better than they think. I want to thank Brendan Ferguson for that. Major props to the 49ers track and field teams who over the weekend took home both the men's and women's outdoor track and field titles in the Atlantic 10. The women won by nearly 60 points, and between the two squads, they took home 21 individual titles. Coach Olsen was named uh, Atlantic 10 Coach of the Year for both the men and the women for the 16th time. And uh, for full, full results, be sure to check out charlotte49ers.com. Also, a shout out to the 49ers golf team for receiving their eight straight NCAA tournament bid. This time as an at-large as the team fell just short in the Atlantic 10 championships as the final round was washed out due to weather. But they will be heading to Greensboro to compete in the NCAA tournament. We hope to catch up with those guys later this week before they head out uh, to the East Course at Grandover Resort for regional accent action up there in Greensboro. Last week, the 49ers announced they would be leaving the Atlantic 10 and moving to Conference USA. A big announcement, uh, of course, and they'll be moving to Conference USA in all sports beginning in the 2013-2014 academic year. Check out uh, all the video comments on charlotte49ers.com. We had a chance to uh, get an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with 49ers Athletic Director Judy Rose this week. We certainly had a lot to talk about. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, Here's part of our conversation. Judy, first and foremost, want to thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule. Things have gotten a little crazy here in the last week or so, so thank you for taking some time out to chat with us. Actually, the last couple of days have been a little calmer for me. <laughs> it's kind of unprecedented what, unprecedented what we've been able to do. We haven't played a down of football yet, but we're going to play FBS football. Do you think that there was some skepticism from the other schools? You know, I I was told that we certainly feel a need that they have in more ways than one. One on the Eastern Division or part of, of their conference, you know, East Carolina and Marshall and UAB are the closest together and beyond that, you know, it's pretty far distance. So I think they were looking for an Eastern Time Zone school to fit uh, in with that. What I tried to sell in this this is where we are today, but look at what we can be and what we will be. Look at the size of our market. Look at the size of our city. Uh, I, think, I think we got in for a number of reasons. I think it was the reputation of our athletic program and our university, the size of our city and the media market, and the reputation of this whole city in sports. Um, so, you know, I think we've got a lot of people to thank. Uh, the folks in this city uh, and, and, and this university for getting us ready as we begin the transition into our new conference home. What do you want the fans, the students, the alumni to kind of expect over the next couple months, over the next couple years as we transition? What do you want them to know uh, that maybe hasn't been said or, or, or that you think is, is important? One thing, I, I want them to embrace this last year that we have in the Atlantic 10. I don't ever want to leave a, a conference that has been good to us and we've been good back for, but we're hosting three championships this next year. And we are in the Atlantic 10 and we will be in the Atlantic 10 until July 1, 2013. So when we host men's soccer and when we host men's baseball and track and field for our men's and women's program next year, I want them to come out and support the conference that we're in. And I want us to leave with great sportsmanship, great attendance at all of our events. And then I want us to enter Conference USA with just uh, a refreshing attitude and one that, that we take in then that we are going to compete in this conference. And the only way we can compete in that conference across the board, including football, is to raise the dollars that we need. Now, there are ways to do it. There are naming rights. Uh, and we have some requests out there right now. If for some reason uh, we don't get 
solid bites on those, then we've got to go back out into the marketplace on, on naming the stadium, on naming um, the uh, field house, and there are other naming opportunities. We're going to have meet. We have a new RFP out for our media rights and sponsorships. Uh, so we're expecting those dollars to increase. Uh, anytime you add football, that occurs. Uh, so. We're having it all in one house now, um, and so we should hear from that in the next couple of months uh, on that one. But people have got to purchase FSLs. It, it, we can no longer sit there and say, well, I'm going to purchase them later. We've got to have that to move forward. We may have to expand the stadium, maybe in what some would call a temporary look. Of, of bleacher seats uh, in there. So uh, people have really got to step up. And, and, you know, if they've been making a, a certain level contribution, in order for us to get there, they need to increase those levels of contributions. It, you know, we've got 55,000 alums in this area. Football can help connect them back to this university, and, and, and they've got to connect themselves, not just saying they're connected, but come back and be a part and contribute. It's certainly an exciting time to be a Charlotte 49er fan. Judy, thank you for taking, taking some time and sitting down with us today. Thank you. We will be dividing the uh, full interview up in parts, and that will be available on charlotte49ers.tv uh, later this week, beginning of next week. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. A lot more uh, conversation with Judy Rose. We now are set to move on uh, and really close out the show for the final time, the last time. We queue up uh, the weekend weather update with Garrett Biedenbaugh. Garrett, it's our last show, man. Our very last PFG. Let's knock this one out of the park, give everybody their weekend weather update. Thank you there, AJ. It has been a pleasure to give each and every one of you weather for the past, what, two years, I guess, I've been doing this. Uh, so here's your weekend weather update for the final time here on charlotte49ers.com. This weekend is gonna look good with that friend we call high pressure. We'll be here on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll have temperatures in the mid 70s on Friday with under mostly sunny skies for baseball that's here this weekend. Uh, baseball is having a great uh, weekend this weekend for weather, but uh, Saturday, the same basic forecast Mostly sunny skies in the upper 70s. Graduation or commencement is on Saturday morning, so I'll be one of those walking across the stage. We'll have some little bit chilly temperatures, overnight lows in the 50s, so it'll take a while to get up to those upper 70s on Saturday. And the same thing on Sunday, overnight lows in the 50s with temperatures in the upper 70s for Sunday under those sunny skies. That's a check of your weekend weather update on this final edition of Panning for Gold. Sunny skies for commencement and baseball with temperatures in the upper 70s, so feeling good. Yeah, this uh, this show has certainly been a lot of fun, man. I, I, I have certainly enjoyed it. Hey, Whoa. look who it is! <laughs> Failed walk-on and uh, and PFG correspondent Kurt Wombat. What's uh, what's going on, man? What is up, players? Figured it wouldn't be a final episode of PFG without a Kurt Wombat sighting. I'm gonna miss you guys, especially you, Jarrett. Anyway, see you guys later. I'm gonna miss you, Niner Nation. Wombat, signing off. You know what? Well, He's right. It wouldn't have been a final episode without a Kurt Wombat sighting. That's true. So glad that he decided to stop by here on not only the season finale, but the series finale of Panning for Gold. Uh, your future endeavors? We'll be down in Columbia doing the weather on Watch Fox News at 10 o'clock. You can also catch his stuff on YouTube because you post it regularly. Too, yeah, on or YouTube Twitter Facebook. at WX Garrett. We'll be doing stuff there too. We're rambling on. We need to sign off. You can follow him on WX Garrett. The show Twitter handle will be around for a little while longer at Panning for Gold 3. So uh, make sure you hit that up. Anything else you want to say? Huh? Have a good one. Go Niners. It's been fun. I think I can officially uh, hang up the tweed jacket. It's going to stay in the closet for a while. Yeah, <laughs>